Everywhere in nature, we encounter the presence of gravity. Drop a stick, and it falls to the ground. Planets move in perfect harmony around the sun. Gravity is the universal force of attraction between all things that possess mass. The Earth pulls us towards its center and in return we pull on the Earth, though too faintly to perceive. Despite being the weakest of all nature's fundamental forces, it governs the universe. Without gravity, there would be no stars, no galaxies, and no us. For millennia, humanity has gazed at the sky, fascinated by the harmonious dance of the planets. But why do they move the way they do? At the beginning of the 17th century, Johannes Kepler searched for the answer. He discovered that planets do not move in perfect circles, but in ellipses. And the closer they are to the sun, the faster they move. With his three laws, Kepler described for the first time how our solar system moves, but he still didn't know why. Years later, Isaac Newton came along. He united heaven and earth with a single idea. The force that makes the apple fall is the same force that keeps the moon in its orbit. With his law of gravity, Newton showed that every object attracts every other, with a force that depends on its mass and decreases with the square of the distance. The universe suddenly was predictable. Planets, moons, comets, all follow the same invisible rules. But when we look at galaxies, something suddenly doesn't add up. At their outer edges, the stars don't slow down, as one would expect. Over vast distances, their orbital speeds remain almost constant, even far from the galactic center, where gravity should be weaker. The orbital speed of a star depends directly on the mass pulling it. The stronger the gravity, the faster it moves. So, if the stars maintain their speed, there must be far more mass than we can see. To maintain the validity of the laws of gravity, we must assume the existence of something invisible. Something that neither emits nor absorbs light. Dark matter. Even Einstein's general theory of relativity, which describes gravity as the curvature of space and time caused by mass, requires this missing mass for the universe to behave as we observe. But what if gravity were something entirely different from what we've always believed? What if gravity were a force that pushes invert from the outside? What would happen then? Let's now consider the Earth as an example. The arrow symbolizes the external force acting on the Earth's mass. Since the Earth has a certain mass, Though relatively small compared to other objects in the universe, a large portion of the gravitational force would pass through it. The Earth's mass and density therefore only partially shield the force of gravity. For this reason we experience a gravitational acceleration of approximately 9.81 meter per square second at its surface. If the Earth had a greater mass, it would consequently shield more gravity, so that a stronger gravitational acceleration would be felt on its surface. 
In fact, objects with greater mass, such as Jupiter for instance, also exhibit a correspondingly stronger gravitational force. Now, however, let's consider much larger structures, such as a galaxy. At the center of a galaxy, there is an extraordinarily large mass, which would mean that the galactic center shields considerably more gravity and thus experiences a significantly higher gravitational acceleration. Here, too, one could assume that at least some of the external force penetrates the center. But what if this were not the case? Suppose there was so much mass at the center of a galaxy that gravity was completely shielded. Then we would have reached the maximum possible gravitational force. This force could not be increased any further by increasing the mass. In contrast to the classical law of gravity, in which the force is calculated from the center and could be increased practically indefinitely, the starting point, in other words the center of the galaxy, would have a spatial extent. This would mean that the maximum gravity could not only occur directly in the center, but also in more distant areas, for example here or even here. What would be the consequences of such a scenario? If the gravitational force remained constant over large distances, the orbital speed of stars would also remain constant. In fact, it turns out that the rotation speed of a galaxy decreases only slowly and remains almost constant, as shown in the rotation curve of galaxies. Could this, perhaps, explain the anomalies observed within galaxies without resorting to dark matter? Thank you for your interest. Stay tuned for the next episode of Dreams of the Universe.